Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. Title sponsor, QBBG, excellent for cooking, baking, and barbecue. Associate sponsor, Papa G's, delicious vegetarian delights. F&B partner, Casa, Grill and Mezabar, supported by Geo Energy Care, solving problems of life. Wardrobe by Stalmart, trendsetters of Indian fashion wear in Singapore. <music> On today's show, we have three very special guests who are going to share their secrets, experiences and insights on pregnancy and motherhood. So let's get started and introduce our first guest, Auntie Zai. Auntie Zai, welcome. Auntie Zai is an expert of Malay massage and confinement. She has a huge clientele of new moms in Singapore. Mother of three daughters and now a grandmom, she has faced complication while giving birth to her daughter. She will be sharing her life story and some tips for healthy pregnancy. Our second guest for today is Gayathri Menon. Gayathri, welcome. Hi, Shan. Gayathri is a renowned makeup artist and an image consultant. Mother of a teenager, she vouches on healthy diet and regular exercise that helped her to shed those extra kilos she gained during her pregnancy. Our third guest for today is Sherlyn Giri. Welcome, Sherlyn. Thank you. Sherlyn is an educator and social activist for causes such as teenage sexuality, media and body image, and fair employment practices. She's a single parent raising her children after having lost her husband in a violent car crash in July 2013. Sherlyn has been kind enough to share her story with us to empower many single mothers out there. Dr. Tejinder Kaur is a highly experienced homopathic consultant with more than 10 years of clinical experience. She has helped women with complicated pregnancies and today she shares with us lifestyle and food tips to follow during pregnancy. Acharya H.T. Gupta is a successful businessman. He has dedicated his life to spreading the practice of Geo Energy. He is a renowned Acharya who has helped top businessmen and today he shall be sharing with us how women who have difficulty in conceiving can benefit from his unique Geo Energy solutions. So let's actually talk about the delivery itself. How was the experience? Uh, what could have better prepared you? I think it's because it's a very individual experience. Different mothers go through entirely different things and I think for us we were not expecting an emergency C-section, which is what happened to my girl. And she had the cord wound around her neck. So for some reason, she had the cord wound around and um, she didn't want to come out. She was not engaged. She was up here. So we went into the, the hospital and uh, waited for my gynecologist to show up. And when he did, he looked at this machine and he said, prep her up for an emergency C-section. That was it. And I just started crying and it was nothing it had nothing to do with the pain even though I was like you know five minutes apart and everything um, but I wasn't dilated and there was no way she's gonna come out unless they cut me open so went into the operation theater they took her out and they said the uh, amniotic sac the fluid was thick as pea soup because she had passed fast motion in it so it was very traumatic considering that it was my first pregnancy and delivery it was a very traumatizing experience for me and my husband as many women when come uh, they come to seek the advice when they're pregnant they are experiencing different kind of difficulties the trauma they have gone through the mental and uh, physical difficulties are there so to overcome that uh, for the next pregnancy, definitely they need to take certain kind of uh, uh, advices or certain kind of precautions so that it should not happen again. So those areas also we have to advise them what to do and what not to do. Auntie Zai, please tell us your experience because I think you had your baby in yeah. a taxi. Yeah. yeah, that day I'm going to work, you know. Suddenly I feel that I want to go, want to go to a loo, you know. I say, hey, I don't know why I want to go toilet. My husband said, better don't, you know, I worry. He say, I said, not my due date, then another two weeks, I said, so you don't have to worry. So by the time we wait for the taxi, 
I, I, I can feel that something is out, you know. When I feel it, I know it's a baby head. And there's someone guy, very nice, he get for us a cab, you know. So my husband, the one who... Delivered the baby. Yeah, yeah. delivered the baby. Yeah. What make me malu, you know, make me shy, oh. because there's a bus. Oh, on the side. Bus. I was in the taxi yeah. and I see them, they look at me. <laughs> I was pushing the baby. Yeah. When I push the baby, then I know that, wow, my baby has come out. And I ask my husband, girl or boy, you see, it's a girl. Oh. So my, my little girl is here today, you know. She's now 34 years already, wow. you know. And that is my very, very good experience and also scary experience. Today we're discussing pregnancy. And often in pregnancy, we can have challenges. Some people have difficulty conceiving. Some people find that they have early termination. Is this an area where geoenergy can actually help us? Definitely, yes. The space we live in is divided into 16 subzones, and we are very deeply connected with that, and it affects us. So there is a likelihood if the couple is sleeping in south of south, southwest zone, then there might, might be delay in pregnancy. So south southwest should be avoided as yes. a sleeping area for both couples. Sleeping area, working area, and out of these 16 zones, three zones are considered negative. Mm -hmm. One is south southwest, another is west northwest, another is east of southeast. Okay. So the family should avoid sleeping or working in three zones. Rest 13 zones are quite okay. So if they can shift their bed slightly towards the west side, uh, that can help them in getting conceived. So let's take a break and come back with some more of these conversations. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. I love coming for dinners at your place. Oh really? Why? What why? Don't you know? We love the food you serve. It tastes great. The taste is excellent. Well, the secret to my recipe is QBB ghee. But isn't ghee fattening? Oh, it's good fat. In fact, two spoons of QBB Pure Ghee on a daily basis gives you all the nourishment for good skin, body and joints. QBB Pure Ghee is trusted over many generations. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. Welcome back to QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood. Today, I have some amazing guests with me and we're discussing pregnancy and motherhood. So let's get back on conversation. So Gayatri, in terms of confinement food, what were some of the practices that were kind of forced down and uh, what did you happily take on and what did you not want to do? So a lot of fish, mm. a lot of egg, a lot of spinach and a lot of ghee which I loved. Yeah. I don't know whether it was good or bad but since they said it was all good I kept eating. Sherilyn, from your perspective, you know, I wasn't particular about what I was eating. I was just eating what everybody else was eating. I mean, I was so told some things that you're not supposed to eat some stuff. They would give the baby win and things like that. And, you know, my mom cooks a lot of Indian food. Right. So she would put like, you know, like what you say, she would put some ghee in it as well because it's supposed to be very nutritious and helpful for the milk. And I think we end up having this connotation or the wrong connotation about ghee at times. Because we give it to our children thinking that it will help them to grow, we think that it is fattening, right? So, and it's such a wrong connotation because it's actually not. I mean, it's, it's a good fat. In the Malay context, how is the ghee used as part of confinement or Okay, children? in the Malay context, normally just in the morning with your em empty stomach, you know, you just take one teaspoon of ghee, just right. take that. Mm -hmm. You don't feel anything, you, you feel it's very nice to take, you know, and you don't feel like, uh, normally when we fry a fish, uh, we can a bit uh, feel is uh, the smell, you know. Uh, yeah. So I say, if you don't want this, then you just okay, take one Okay, so they don't scoop. want the smell of the fish, uh, so they yeah. can have uh, just the ghee on its teaspoon. own. But morning before you take anything. Okay. Just, yeah. So during the pregnancy, you know, during the different uh, trimesters, what are some of the diet elements that we should be doing? Definitely, we have to take care of the diet. With the normal diet, the person should have a proper nutrients, proper minerals, carbs. That is also very essential. Not necessary. You only have to have a vegetables and fruit only. Right. You really need to have a grains also. Right. Not necessary. You really have to avoid ghee, which is uh, ghee is also a very big component for the pregnant woman's diet, which helps for the flexibility of the connective tissues. 
helps for the labor to ease out for the stools also it's right, so good for the constipation, constipation and all so small quantity of ghee is always recommended for them single motherhood single parenting how's the experience been Nobody will want something like that to happen to you know to your, to yourself or to even your worst enemies. So it really came as a shocker when my husband passed away, and I had so many things to deal with. I can safely safely say that I didn't have any time to mourn. There was no time to mourn. You just go there, you do your thing. You know, even even on the, at the wake, you just do your thing, and then you come out, and then there are emotional issues, financial issues. There's the children. There's everything that needs to be done. When your spouse passes away. It's not the person alone who passes away. You, a part of you, dies. That that wife role is gone. You're not a wife to nobody anymore. Auntie Zai, you've been a single parent as well, and from from your experience, it was a separation. Uh, how was how was the separation taken in your culture and in society? What were some of the challenges that you faced? I have three children that times. My younger is nine months, and of course, it's very difficult for me on that time. You know. I got to work. I was work under telecommunication that time. I got to bring them to my working place, and I put them in the toilet room. Oh wow! You know, because nobody uh, that you can, didn't have the services uh, to look available, after them. Yeah. You know, it's quite difficult for me. And did your family support your divorce? Of course, my family that time they support, but everybody in the same. They are still young that time. So sounds like work kept you going. Yeah, everything's in... I got to do my own, you know, and so what I want to tell you, although we are three of us is single parents, you know, but this doesn't stop us to be, mm. you know, we must move on with our life. Yeah, uh, you know, and we have to be sincere in whatever we do. On the other side of of that is uh, abortion. Any thoughts on on abortion? Has it ever been something that you've considered yourself, or you've had to go through yourself? That is always a controversial issue. Even when we're teaching teenage sexuality, I think the one thing that we um, tell them before we start anything is, you know, you all are raised uh, in different backgrounds with different religious and cultural beliefs. Mm. So you go with that as well. But also, what's important to to you? I think personally, for myself, as a woman, you know, I shouldn't have somebody policing my body. For For me, you know, I shouldn't have some kind of a paternalistic force to tell me what I should and should not do with my body, especially when I'm an adult. So sometimes circumstances push you to doing something that you feel that is important for you, and you yourself understand yeah. that I don't think you need to go around validating with other people. It's a personal yeah. decision, yeah. and some people are for it, some people are against it. I don't think it's a matter of pro-life or against life. There's so many ways of looking at it. I mean, if you cannot raise the child, then wouldn't it make more sense not to bring it into this world and then let it suffer for whatever circumstances? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I had experience because I got married very young, so we had the experience where we conceived uh, within the first year. We were still studying. You know, there was no way that we would be able to financially, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, physically yeah. look after a baby, and it it made sense. And I know there were lots of sensitivities in the culture about first yeah. child, uh, so you do have the fears of of worrying: Will I be able to conceive again? And am I creating a damage for my selfishness, um, for the ability to have for us to have a future and to complete our studies? But I'm very sure it was not a light decision that you and your husband at that point in time, you know, took. You you weighed the pros and cons and you thought thought about it. So it's not like um, abortion is just another form of contraception. It is no, really something just, that you yeah. think you weigh very heavily, and then when you when you feel that you know this is what's right for me right now. And then you do it. So yes. it's not a flippant decision that no, you make. No, but and I think it is really important for it, for the for the couple to really make that decision, uh, and not to have judgment around it. So there's a lot of advice, contradicting advice about be the mother, be the parent, or be the friend. What do you choose? Okay, to be a friend that we she can tell you everything, you know. To be a mother, they have to follow what. You know what a mother wants. To be a sister, they can cry on you. You know they can share everything to you. Of course, a friend they can share more because you are my buddy. You know that is what I treat to my children. When you have to respect me, you have to respect me as a mom. But when you got to talk to me, you got to tell me what's your problems. You got to share with me. 
and so far, okay, until now, we can sit down, we can laugh, we can cry together. Let's take a short break and come back. And on this show, not only do we share with you the secrets of womanhood, but some secret recipes to tantalize the taste buds of your loved ones as well. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. I love coming for dinners at your place. Oh really? Why? What why? Don't you know? We love the food you serve. It tastes great. The taste is excellent. Well, the secret to my recipe is QBB ghee. But isn't ghee fattening? Oh, it's good fat. In fact, two spoons of QBB pure ghee on a daily basis gives you all the nourishment for good skin, body and joints. QBB pure ghee is trusted over many generations. Our favourite hair grow back shampoo. Meet the Shampoo Hero Bio Royale Grow Back Shampoo. Daily use natural shampoo that can be effective for everyone. Bio Royale Grow Back Shampoo helps in the following ways. This is a secret that you'll want to keep. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood. Inspired by True Stories. Welcome back to QBB Presents Secrets of Womanhood. We're discussing pregnancy and motherhood today. And we have our special celebrity guest to share with us the secret recipe of the day on Secrets of Womanhood, Chef Devagi. Welcome. Yes. Hi. I'm excited. What are we doing for pregnancy? I believe okay. a lot of the ladies eat fish that we've been talking about. Yes. So what are you going to do today? I am going today? to do fish. Oh. So, um, but it's, it's something different from the normal style of eating. So I'm going to use miso, which is very high in protein. It's, yes. it's soya, fermented soya. Fermented soya is actually very good for pregnant women. And uh, I'm going to use that to make a sauce to pour over salmon and then okay. serve it with brown rice. Lovely, so yeah. let's get started. Okay, so first I'll do the sauce. Uh, for the sauce, we need mirin. Mm -hmm. Mirin is um, sweet wine. Okay. Yeah. So is wine okay to have yes, in the Yes, because we are just burning it, we are boiling so it. So it's burning it. Out. And then vinegar. And then soy sauce. Okay. Some sesame oil. Spring onion. Okay. As much as you can ginger and uh, miso. So this is white miso because there's white, red and dark right. miso. Usually uh, miso is quite thick so you need to first make sure that it's sort of all smooth. Okay, so sauce. take all the lumps yeah, out. Lumps. And you do this you turn, on top of the fire? Or you uh, no, you okay. just make it smooth and then you turn on the, the fire. fire. Oh. Yeah, and the fire should be low okay. because miso tends to become very bitter if you cook it on high oh. fire. Okay, the sauce is ready. So I'm going to leave this aside and do the marination of the fish okay. and cook the rice. Now rice. what I have here is uh, brown rice, mm -hmm. but I use brown basmati rice. Okay. I soak it for a while, like 20 minutes, and then I just cook it like I would cook rice. Okay, and then we have garlic. Look at this, the, the garlic is a lot yes. for a little bit of rice. It's like, so in this case, the garlic is the vegetable here. And then a bit of carrot. Okay. Now it can be any vegetables, but I'm just putting carrots for the colour. Nice. And pepper and salt. So I'm just going to put about one tablespoon of UBB ghee. You don't have to wait for the ghee to be hot. Just straight away put okay. this in. So I'm going to add in the rice, okay. salt, some black ground black pepper and just mix this up. This is done. So now we will do the star for this dish, that's the fish. Okay. Okay, so I have salmon here. Yes. If it's not salmon, then you can use any other type of fish. But salmon is good because it's very high in omega 5, which QBB ghee also has. Yes. Yeah. But this we are going to add because we want a dish. Right. 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 So what I'm going to do is just take QBB ghee, put it in a pan. And I'm not salting it, I'm just okay. putting skin, skin side, side down. down. And is the ghee going to make it crispy? Yes, eventually. 
and then we use some sea salt on top of the fish. Okay. Beautiful color of the fish. It's yeah. nice and pink and orange. And we just leave it to sear. Now, some people find that they, their salmon has a bit of a smell. What's the best way to clean the fish to get rid of the smell? No, you can't clean a fish to get rid of the smell at mm. all. Um, the only thing you can do is to buy the freshest fish so you do not get the smell. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can see the fish is becoming Nicely nice. Cooked. Yeah. Now when you cook salmon, you have to make sure that it is not fully cooked. So right. you see, so it's, pink in, the uh, it's pink in the center because once you turn off the stove, you leave it to rest. The heat from the fish will cook it cook inwards. All the way yeah. Through. So okay. then now we can plate the fish. Okay, so here you are. Thank you, Chef Dave Key. I love the energy Chef Dave Key's secret recipe has given me with her ghee and I'm really enjoying it. And with all this energy, I now want to use it for our rapid fire round. Are you ladies ready? Yes. All right, I'm going to um, put the questions first to Gayatri. What would you choose, a candlelight dinner or a romantic hike in the woods or a stay in bed? I think the hike, because I'm a very adventurous kind of person. Mm -hmm. Sherilyn. If God grants you a wish that you can deposit fat anywhere in your body, what would that part of your body be where you want to deposit some extra fat? Okay, extra fat, I suppose, with all the sitting and TV watching that I like to do, my butt as a cushion perhaps, yeah. Auntie Zai, what three pieces of advice would you give a girl that's, that came to you for advice and said, uh, people think I'm a bad mother because I'm working? I just, you know, Ignore and ignore them. So ignore, ignore and ignore. Yes. Okay, great. I still think you girls played it a bit safe, but I think Auntie with your, you know, big chest and ignore, ignore, ignore. Here's our lovely hamper from QBB Key. And so I hope you enjoy uh, cooking with it. The one teaspoon in the morning that you were mentioning. Yes. So, ladies, we won't send you back empty-handed. We have a lovely gift hamper for you as well from Bio Royale. Hair products from Bio Royale. Being on today's show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Today on Secrets of Womanhood, we spoke about pregnancy and motherhood. Women are goddesses. Our bodies create the miracle of life. There is no right or wrong, whether it's a traditional or modern approach we wish to follow. It is our responsibility as media, society, employers, and fellow human beings to raise our voice to enable women to have more choices in pregnancy and motherhood. Together, we must eradicate these secrets of womanhood to empower men and women to change these secrets into successes of womanhood. Till next time, may peace, happiness, and success be with you. Produced by Video House, an international production house based in Singapore.